Hello again friends, Patrick here from Avid Max Tying Tuesday. A little purple parawolf action for you today. Purple flies, they're here to stay. The fish have given their approval. It's the way to go. So here's a purple parawolf for you. A little bit of chartreuse on the top. Let's go. You start with the ceremonial crushing of the barb as is tradition and the original recipe calls for a TMCO 9300 this is definitely not a TMCO 9300 it just it's a straight shank down eye hook from my one of my many containers of random hooks but it'll get the job done for us today I think it's a size 10 maybe even a size 8 just for you guys playing the home game so you can see everything nice and well. For the thread on this one, I can afford to get away with some Semperfly Classic Wax 6 aught. In the smaller sizes, you're going to want a finer thread, silk if possible. Silk to really grip the hairs that uh, we're going to be using. The original recipe calls for elk hair. I've done a little modification just because elk hair doesn't necessarily take the dye as well as uh, deer belly hair you'll see in a moment. A little thread base first. Snip the excess. If you watch Jack Dennis tie this thing up, the originator of this pattern, he would already be getting the tails and tinsel in the back. I am nowhere near as good a tire as Jack was, or Jack is, so I will leave that step for just a little bit later. I'm going to deal with the split wing, the parapost first. Thread base in place. Right about there. This will give us just a little bit of room to work up front. We're anticipating the post to be right about here. Give the give the fly some good balance. Tap tap tap. Get your hairs all lined up in your stacker. And as I said, this is chartreuse deer belly hair. High contrast, very nice. Works well with the purple, I think. Get it all stacked, get the loose, loose under fur out. A couple of short stragglers off the top. Jack recommends that we go about a hook's gape worth of hair. For any given fly, you'll have to adjust as needed, depending on the size of your hook. Let's see. Estimate our post size. Yeah, something like that. Why not? Once, twice. Get the hair in place nicely. crank, cinch it into place, couple turns to get that little base in there. This, and those couple turns will definitely make handling a little bit easier for you later on. First couple I tied I tried to cut all of this hair right here at a bit of an angle to give me more body taper, but that was presenting problems just cinching it up with the thread, so I now cut as close as possible, as flush as possible, and then with the thread touching wraps, nice and easy, nice and careful, it gives us a fairly clean little transition there. Just like that. 
don't necessarily worry too much about the taper. We will address that soon coming here with another little modification I've made for this fly. Back up to your wing, sweep it back, come back in front, build up a little bit of a thread dam there. Keep things in place a little bit for you. Now, for this post, a split split post but first first go around vertical if you try and do the split first and then go vertical you'll definitely have problems so go vertical post first vertical post first not too much tension if you need to release a little bit of thread get a little more length as you can see it's getting a little short there let it hang then take your fingers and just unroll a bit of thread from your spool and proceed, keep on going. Post is pretty much good. And don't put too much tension when you're tying up your posts because that'll cause, that tension will cause the hair to bend over and you'll blow all your wraps. You'll have to start all over again. So split post wing taking my bodkin here anything long and skinny you can use a paper clip that'll work just as well doing my best to split it even 50 50 there we go oh it's tough to do There we go, caught it. I've got a little bit of water and a little bit of, in a little dish here just to make things a little easier for me. Make the handling of this hair a little bit more agreeable. So from our post, come back in. Split, start wrapping up one side, start posting one half of that split wing. Nice and easy, easy tension. Again, if you need more thread, let it hang. Unspool it from your spool of thread. Get back in there. Don't need too much, just enough where it's making a post. Grab that first post we had, get it out of the way. Start on, oh, see, blew the thread. Nice and easy. Start up on that second post. Give myself a little more thread. Blow the wraps. Of course, if you do this with too much thread out, you'll get the same problem, run into tension issues, blow your thread wraps again. There we are. It's starting to cooperate. And this one's a tough one, as you can see, it's going to take a, probably a couple tries to get these posts just right. Don't expect to stick the landing on this fly first try. There we are. are split shaping up and that little 
Y post is leaning a little bit forward on me. But we can always address that by coming back, putting a little more thread up front, standing a little bit, something a little closer to vertical for us. Wings are split. There we go. Twist them a little bit. They've got a gone a little askew. That's a little better. Migrate the thread all the way back to the bend. And here we will put in our tails and tinsel. Body ribbing for this UTC Mirage Tinsel Opal Small. Uh, for this size, you might be able to get away with a medium. It's going to come out pretty chunky, so small will do. Some hairline mayfly tails. Uh, use tailing materials, whichever ones you find appropriate, whichever ones you like. You know, happy little trees, it's your fly. Do as you wish. Even on the UMQA website, you look at the images for the Parawolf, even they can't decide which tailing fibers are the best. So. Dealer's choice on that one. Tails and tinsel in place. Pulling my tails to length, maybe about length of the body, why not? There we are. Secure all that. My post is starting to get away from me. Stay. Traditionally, the body on this one is wrapped with super fine dubbing, which definitely is the way to go on the smaller sizes. I would say 14 and smaller, probably. If you're trying, if you're tying this on a big old hook, size 10, something like that, you can get away with some UTC Antron yarn, purple. Right there at the transition where we cut our uh, deer hair. Go ahead, secure the Antron, one around to lock it down. I like to pull it back. I'm very miserly with all my materials. I don't like to waste. Wrap it back. The nice thing about this Antron, gives you really good control of your distribution, your taper, just a lot of control in general. You can do a lot of manipulation, a lot of fine tuning of your fly and its profile here. This stuff, I love it. Bring that thread back up front. Give the thread a quick whip finish, just so it stays in place. As we're wrapping that antron, thread goes on the bobbin rests. Here we go, wrapping the body. 
Hopefully the tinsel will stay out of our way. Sometimes that Antron will get a little unruly on you, that's okay, you can always give it a haircut at the end. It's getting a little shaggy. If it is a little bit of, a little bit shaggy and people start giving you guff about it, you can always tell them you bought it at the store. It wasn't me. Maybe one more wrap of that Antron up front. Why not? Maybe two. Lock the Antron in place. I always migrate it a little bit back. Make sure it stays locked when I cut away the spool. I like to cut very close. Sometimes, it's, if your thread lock is right up against the edge, the end of that spool, or the yarn while it's on the spool, it'll actually unravel on you. Problems, you're gonna have to re-wrap, re-tie, re-do a lot of things. There we go. Body's taken care of. Whip, quick whip finish again. One, two. A little bit of cleaning just before we do the tinsel wrap. All right, body ribbing, here we go. Get it nicely in place. Try and get your wraps as elegant as possible. There we are. All the way up to the head. Secure the tinsel. Get some hairs out of the way. Big wide wraps coming back to the post and to the back side. Time to get the hackle around that split wing post. Make sure it's still split. Hackle, I think this one is some sort of light done color, some sort of bleached color. Either way, you go for a color to match, whatever your heart desires, make sure you have it cup side up, I would say. So, don't know if you can see, there you go. You can kind of see that the exterior side of the feather would be down down toward the actual hook shank. Secure it in, use that pair of posts to help you out, 
make sure it stays in place. And then you can even wrap that stem around the pair of post once or twice. Give it a little bit of extra staying power. It's not gonna go anywhere on you that way. Clip out the stem. Got the hackle in my Stanfo, Stanfo hackle plier. It's the way to go. Makes life easy. Here we go. Nice thing, it's got just enough weight where even if you drop your hackle plier, still going. Quite a few wraps on that, nice and bushy. That's the way I like them. Then I just let the hackle pliers hang on that side, closest to my thread. Sweep back all the hackle that is surrounding the post. And then just tie off that hackle, hanging in the pliers there. Nice convenient way of not locking up all the hackle that is around your post into the securing wraps there. Out away the excess. Technical difficulty of your thread getting wrapped around the spool. Stay. If you get a little bit of hackle trapped, Jack Dennis tells us, I don't care how good you are, you're always going to get a little bit of hackle trapped in there, so don't feel bad. Happens to the best of us. Whip finisher in place, sweep back the hackle again, one, two, three. for good measure. Come on now. There it is. Snip away the thread. Make a little adjustment on your hackle there. Make sure it's nice and uniform and bushy all around. Wing post is still split. There you go. At this point, Jack would advise putting a little dab of head cement in there. Probably definitely a good idea. I will do something just a little different. No head cement. Solares Flex. Just a little dot. I've got the, as you can see, split wing laid down a little bit. Just got it pinched down on both sides. Tiniest little shot of flex in there. Just a little drop. 
solar res in place. Split wings looking good. Blast it with the UV right quick. Set it in place. And then we're using the synthetic hairline mayfly tails so we can get our tails into the position we want, give them a little lift, give them a little separation. Synthetic tails, you can afford to wrench on them. They're not going anywhere. They won't break on you. They got the durability. And that, that friends is a purple parawolf. Little split post up there. There we go. Good visibility, you got that chartreuse up there body ribbing you're gonna probably lose a little bit of that ribbing up front as you can see we got to get the thread back and forth for the hackle post one way or another but still plenty of ribbing to see I think the fish will approve purple flies it's the new hotness get in on it while you can there you have it the purple parable friends if you like this one, like, subscribe, helps out. And uh, until the next one, we'll see you on the water. Tight lines, friends.